Hello, and welcome back to my channel. I'm Susan Lynn. I'm a psychic and a medium. And today we're going to be talking like this is a magic wand or something, but maybe it is because I just lit that candle with fire. <laughs> Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining me. If you're new here, I'm a psychic and a medium, and I channel these messages. That is why they kind of go off kind of half-cocked the way this one is going to go. Stay tuned. You might be surprised. So today we're going to talk about I'm psychic, now what? Now, first of all, you guys just clicked off because you were like, I'm not psychic. And so I don't want to have to start off this whole video of getting into an argument with you. So let's say you're intuitive. I'm intuitive. Now what? I've had a weird dream. Now what? I saw something. I heard something. Now what? What do I do with this? This is what my spirit guides want to talk to you about today. I do this video every week, believe it or not, and I have an entire playlist of many, 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 many videos. It's like a spiritual library that's free for you. And at the end of this video, I post the playlist. So hopefully you can stay to the end and you can click on the playlist and you can kind of browse around. It's it's absolutely there for you to click on anything you want to know about. And this could be literally anything from crop circles to how to raise your vibration, deal with negative energies, soul contracts, talking to your spirit guides, aliens, uh, you name it. I've talked about it, but I'm going to tell you this is 2024. Who knows when you're watching this video? It could be 2034. Who knows? I may be in the great unknown by the time you watch this video. I don't know, but 2024 and the ensuing years are going to be about integration. So what does that mean? It means that humans are waking up. We're waking up to our spiritual abilities. We're waking up to new, new abilities, the guides are saying. You know, yeah, we have, maybe we have some junk DNA. You know, it's like, no, this is not something that's in the closet of your home. If you're not going to find the junk DNA in the junk drawer, you're going to find it in your own body. And, and they really think it's funny that we call it junk DNA. They don't really care. It's semantics. They don't even speak our language anyway. And they're half the time scratched our heads about what are they even talking about up there. But let's call it DNA that has been offline. Scientists are like, we don't know what that does. It's kind of like the button in your car that you never got installed. You didn't get that package. And you can see there's a button there, but doesn't work. Guess what? Now your button works. And that means... You're going to have things that happen. Take it from someone who's been there. Take it from me, who was just a regular old person, had a whole career, and then started having psychic abilities that would not stop. Now, yes, I was born psychic. You were born psychic. However, if it is in your soul path to be an astrologer, a numerologer, an Akashic Records reader, a channel, a medium, any number of things we haven't even discovered yet. Maybe you're going to be a mermaid. Maybe you're going to talk to dolphins. I don't know. <laughs> but whatever that is for you, whatever that is for you, it's coming online because you're having experiences. All of a sudden, you know what the squirrel is thinking in the backyard. And your spouse probably is trying to right now schedule a mental check up for you <laughs> because that's how this goes down and that's why we don't tell people right that's why we don't tell people but i'm your people you could watch this video in the bathroom you could go into the car the garage take a walk i'll be your people i'll be your tour guide i often want to get like one of those stick on badges that says hello my name is susan and department is earth you know i work in the earth department because i'm always saying literally always saying, I just work here. Like, I don't get this place either. I'm a pretty new person here. I've only had a handful of lifetimes that I've lived in the Milky Way. That does not make me special. It makes me really effed up because I don't get it. I don't get the language. It's like I landed in a place that I don't understand anything. I don't understand anything. So no, it doesn't make me special. And I've done videos on star seeds before. Check those out. We're not talking about that today. We're talking about integrating your abilities, right? First thing we had to do was tell you you have abilities and tell you how you might know you have abilities. Again, 
I had a client yesterday who said, I heard a voice that said I was a healer. I don't hear voices. I'm pretty sure I'm mentally healthy. <laughs> that's what happens, you guys. Something happens that's out of your normal life. Now, if you look back at your normal life, I promise you, promise you, something happened when you were a kid. You saw something, you heard something, you experienced something, you felt uh, something good or bad, usually bad, because if it's good, you're not watching this video, right? If you had good experiences, you're not watching, you're not drawn to this video, typically. Is that true? Is that true? They're like, eh. You know, they're they're not being, uh, they're, <laughs> they're not going to go on the record. I would say to you, in my experience, people that have had really good psychic experiences or really good experiences with the unknown, the occult, the non-physical, they're chill about it. They're like, yeah, I get feelings. Yeah, I hear things. It, it doesn't, they're not in angst over it. They're not seeking out WTFMI psychic. They're not, those are not search terms they're putting in Google. Okay. They're like chill with it. My audience, God bless you all. And I love you all. We're all neurotic. Okay. We're the neurotic people are drawn to me because I'm also neurotic. And my spirit guides are always saying, yeah, oh, lighten up, <laughs> lighten up. It's not that serious. And frankly, if you've ever told someone who's taking something very seriously to lighten up, it's probably not the best thing to do. However, here you are watching this video. If you're still watching, you get a gold star already. So listen, you've had experiences. I don't care what they are. Fill in the blank. They could run the gamut of all types of experiences. Good, bad, and different doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Because the big universe your spirit guides are trying to tell you you have abilities and you don't realize it, but you sign this contract, you know, you sign this contract and it says right here that you're supposed to start fulfilling your contract. And it says right here, today's date and time. <laughs> and they said resources, you may want to check out Susan Lynn. Okay. You may want to check out classes from other people. You may want to just do some research. We'll help you. We'll guide you to the people that you resonate with. Again, I'm not trying to say all my people are neurotic. I'm just trying to say a certain type of people tend to follow me. They're inquisitive, they're thinkers, they're questioners, and they're arguers, okay? Because we're thinkers and we're inquisitive. We're not arguing. We're simply asking for more information. Trust, but verify, okay? If you believe in mermaids and unicorns, you're not watching this video because you never questioned it in the first place. What's left is the hardcore coffee drinking, reality soaking up people. You're my people. I'm your people. Let's do this. Okay. Now, you had an experience. You forgot about it. You repressed it, whatever happened. But now it's happening again. Now you're having a dream. You're having a visitation. You had a, a vision that actually came true. You had psychic abilities, meaning knowings. You just knew something was going to happen and it did. Um, you heard something, any number of things. And now you're wondering, what does this mean? What do I do with this? Yeah, so what? Right? So what do I do with it now? I'm a banker. I'm a teacher. I'm retired. I'm grandma. I'm dad. I'm grandpa. I'm a student. What do you want from me, <laughs> right? That's kind of how I look at it is, what do you want from me? <laughs> I'm, I'm a human living a human 3D, very limited life. And now you're going to give me this new skill set, thanks, uh, that allows me to operate outside of the lines of our culture and our society. Thanks. What do I do with that? Because... I've done a lot of videos very, touching on this in different ways because it's an important message. If you go to people and say, gosh, I really feel horrible for you. And they say, well, why? And you say, well, I, you're getting a divorce. <laughs> it's like, 
that's not going to go over well, people. We have to understand how to use our psychic voice. It's like how to use your inside voice when you're a child, right? We have to understand how to use these abilities. Don't call it psychic. I don't care. Call it intuitive. Call it, make, make a name up. I don't care. If you don't like a certain term, guess what? You're in luck because the spirit guides are telling me that all these terms aren't going to mean anything anyway. Because we are expanding past the terms. You're not going to be a psychic. You're not going to be a numerologist. You're not going to be an astrologist. You're going to be somebody who does something slightly different that utilizes those things as a tool. Our tool chest just got expanded. Our energy is getting expanded. You signed up for this life. You're here today for a reason. There really are soul contracts. You really did sign up for this. And this is your orientation. <laughs> this is your orientation. All right, so how do you do it? I wish I knew. <laughs> I wish I knew how to tell you to do this. Okay, first of all, I'm going to switch over to a lot more channeling because I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure I'm doing the best job myself. I'm just a tour guide. I just work here, seriously. So, okay. First of all, they want to say, be gentle with yourself because this is just like anything new. If, you know, when we're younger, when we're kids, you know, when we're in, in 10, 11, 12, 5, 6, 7, new things are always on the horizon. We're just learning to ride the bike. We're just learning to read. We're just learning algebra for the third time. We're just learning, you know, how to drive a car. New is like something that is always happening when you're younger. But when you get to be a certain age, new isn't so welcome. When the boss comes in and says, I have a new task I want you to do, you're like, the hell you do, right? So, you know, new, it becomes like a dirty word sometimes. You know, I don't want to do anything new. I want everything to kind of stay the way I've got it arranged because it's working pretty well. Why would I want to do that? Now, some people love new. Some people are like, I love new. I want new all the time. And those people don't struggle with this because they're already chasing unicorns. They already clicked off this video. They're literally meditating in the corner, tripping out on whatever brain chemistry is happening, and they're cool. That leaves you and me, right? The ones that are super in reality for whatever, I was going to say for whatever reason, but then the guide said astrology, <laughs> <laughs> numerology, your soul contract. This is why you're super in reality because you have certain astrological aspects, certain numerological aspects, and certain soul contract aspects. You chose this, these ingredients to make this wonderful dish called you in this incarnation. If it's your soul path, how do you know it's your soul path? Let's start there. How do I know, Susan? Like, so what? I had a vision. I had a dream. You're right. You're right. If you just had one vision, one dream, you heard something one time, you experienced some amazing thing one time, that is not a soul path. That doesn't mean your whole soul path is in that direction. It means that you had a beautiful kinetic synchronicity with the divine with the divine. Maybe you witnessed, many of us don't know how we were able to steer the car back on the road or how this thing didn't happen or how we got that job. There's miracles. There's synchronicities that happen in your life. That is fine. That's normal. Where it gets to be abnormal, <laughs> where it gets to be more of a communication uh, more of a soul path is when it picks up steam. And I, all I can do is give you my example. So even though I've been only on this earth or only in the Milky Way, I don't know why that's important to say because I, anyway, doesn't matter. A handful of times, you know, I was definitely born open, meaning a lot of people have to meditate 
to have experiences or have to match their vibration, raise their vibration up to match the experiences, raise their vibration up to connect to the the dead or the people that have crossed over or whoever you want to connect with. I didn't. I never had to do that. I could connect while I was ordering, you know, a taco at the at the drive through. You know what I mean? I and I, that I'm not. This is not to brag because it's not about bragging. Everything comes with its own problems. Everything has its own challenges. Okay, believe me. If you're a wide open person, you have your own challenges. I just like everybody that has straight hair, that wants curly hair, that has this, that wants that, that is short, that wants to be tall, that's tall. That wants, we all want what we don't have. I personally feel like I would rather have to work at this because it would it would make uh, the situation would be different for me in a lot of ways. So anyway, what happens is even though I was born open, I nailed it shut. I nailed every window, every door shut to my psychic abilities. Why would you do that, Susan? Because when you're born wide open, it's like it's like being a baby in Grand Central Station. Who you're innocent, you're unprotected, you don't know anything. And yet all these weirdos are walking by all the time. You know, um, it's it's not a cool thing because. You don't know how to protect yourself. You don't know how to not talk to strangers. You grow up very quickly spiritually or you nail all the windows and doors shut. You know, if you're using a Grand Central Station theme example, you know, you go to the bathroom and you put yourself in the stall and you lock the door and you climb on top of the toilet and pretend like it's out of order. <laughs> That's funny. So, you know, because they show me the whole picture of me being on the toilet, crouching down with the out of order sign on the door. That is exactly what I had to do. I'm out of order. Do not come here. Now, what happens is this is something everybody needs to hear. You can say you're out of order. Especially. Especially when you're waking up or coming online, you can say, I don't do that. I did it once. I don't do it anymore. Or I had the experience, got the t-shirt, no thanks, don't want to do that. You can say that all you want. If it's your soul path, this is the difference. If it's your soul path, they're just going to rip the sign off the door, wad it up, throw it on the floor, knock on your door, and knock on your door, and knock on your door. And then they're going to rattle the door. And they're probably going to scare. Good thing you're in the bathroom. The caca right out of you. Seriously, because you said you didn't want to experience it, but now you are experiencing it. And guess what? You're experiencing it on more and more and more and more levels. They knock on the door, then they knock harder on the door, then they shake the door. Do you understand how that, how that might look in your life as far as getting information, getting psychic information, or them knocking on your door energetically, even if you're a healer, it doesn't matter. It does Fill in the blank, you guys. Fill in the blank. You don't have to be psychic. It can be anything. Anything that's not 3D human. So how that shows up in your life is that you start having more dreams. You start hearing more things. You start having more knowings about things. It depends. I did, I did a lot of videos on psychic abilities. Look it up in your spiritual. It's under the wow playlist. Click on the icon. You'll go to my main channel page, go to playlist, go to wow. It's all there for you. Depending on your own psychic abilities. If you're claircognizant, you get knowings. If you're clairsentient, you get feelings. I feel, I feel this person is going to get the job. I feel my friend's house is haunted. Clairsentience. I see this person getting fired. I can see that house having uh you know a leak i just and then you switch and you say i feel it's going to have a leak what just happened you used two two of your clairs at once seeing and feeling pay attention to how you talk that's going to belie how you're getting the messages if you're having dreams you tell your spouse you tell your friends you tell your family i just keep having this dream and it's so real when dreams are real 
And I mean, real, like you were there. That's not a dream. That's a vision. Now, what can be discer disconcerting and discerning, what? Not, it can be disconcerting is I think the word. Is that it can be like a dream about somebody crossing or a dream about some big accident or a dream about some thing that uh, is upsetting. This is why you want to be clued into some kind of community that you can ask questions. Hey, this happened to me. What do you think happened? Or you want to take classes somewhere because you don't want to be doing this alone because that vision can be a metaphor. It may not, it's real, you were there, but it could be a metaphor. It could be a story about something that's going to happen. And dreaming or having a vision or even having a knowing or a feeling that someone is going to cross over happens all the time with psychics. And more often than not, it's not that that person crosses over, it's that their identity changes. An identity death, meaning you lost the job. You got pregnant. You retired. You left your spouse. Your spouse left you. All these things are identity changes. And in some ways, a death of your previous identity. And that can turn out to look like someone's going to cross over. So this is important stuff to learn. Because when you're just getting this raw data, this raw information, you're just left with your own 3D mind to try to make sense of it. And then what do you do? You put up the out of order sign again. You say, uh-uh, I'm not doing this. You can't make me to it. I'm not doing it. You're probably wrong about that. They can make you do it because if it's your sole path, have you signed a contract before you came down here that you were going to do this work? This work could be anything, healing, Akashic records, astrology, numerology, some new thing that you create. You're going to do it because they're going to hound you just like those people still trying to sell you the extended warranty for your car. They're going to hound you. And that's going to show up in your life in all these different ways, in dreams, in people, in people showing up in your life and saying, you know what? I think you're really psychic. What? Are you crazy? Or they say, can you come over? I think I have a ghost. And you're like, why would you ask me? <laughs> you know what I mean? Why would you ask me? <laughs> what are you talking about? Your friends see it a lot of times before you do, but because you're not talking about it, they're not talking about it. Or maybe it freaks them out as much as it freaks you out. So ne neither one of you are talking about it until they need you. Some other ways that this might show up is all of a sudden you're drawn to tarot. You're drawn to crystals. Oh, the guides are calling it gateway drugs. I love it. I love it. Crystals are gateway drugs. I love that. Well, so is all of this. Uh, I'm a gateway drug, apparently. Um, all of this, tarot, oracle, pendulum, dowsing rods, astrology, numerology, healing. I'm not going to let you healers off the hook. All of this, it starts out as a hobby. It starts out as an interest. Oh, I just have this interest in past lives. It's so fascinating. Honey, that's, that's the gateway drug. You are now going to be hooked because you're supposed to be. They show up. That's the knocking on the door. You know, those are the knocks. Those are the gentle knocks. Are you okay in there? Don't you want to come out and play with these Oracle cards? <laughs> don't you want to, don't you want to go out and see the moonlight and put your crystals out? <laughs> and then it goes from that to the banging. That's the visions. That's the feelings. That's the knowings. When you say to your coworker, your friend, your husband, your wife, your whoever, I just know that our neighbors are moving out. And they're like, How, what are you even talking about? They're not moving out. They're not going anywhere. And then six months later, because time is broken on the other side, 
your neighbors are telling you they're putting their house up for sale. And whoever you said that to is looking at you now like you have a third eye because you do, because you saw that. And nobody knows what to do about that. That that's that's the part. That's what this video is about, right? Now, what do I do? Now, what do you do is you take a class because, and, and I don't want you to get certified. You don't need to be certified. You don't even need to take that many classes. You simply just need to take a class to understand that there are others out there just like you. Find a community. Go to the local crystal store, see if they have a class. Go to the local crystal store and just hang out and see how you feel. Go to the occult store. See, how do you feel when you go in there? Pay attention to the stimuli around you because not all of it is good. Not all occult stores are for you. Maybe you're drawn to the Wiccan community. Maybe you're not. Maybe you're drawn to numerology, but not astrology. We're all different. Find your jam. Find your people. Also, some of you might be drawn to all of it, and that's okay too. That There's nothing wrong with that. You might be the buffet of spirituality people. That's cool too. Likely, even if you're drawn to one thing because of the energy right now, if you're drawn to one thing, likely you'll get really involved in that, and then spirit might push you out of that into another thing. Now, why would they push you out? Well, because you actually are supposed to be doing something a little different, but yet you got too comfortable in this group. You know, you finally found people like you. You're like, I'm never leaving. This is my people. And then what happens is you have infighting. Something goes wrong. You're not feeling comfortable there. And then you start to question the whole thing. And then you put the out of order sign back on the bathroom stall. That is not what is supposed to happen. What is supposed to happen is take a step back and say, is this me? Is this them? Is this the community? Maybe it's just a rotten apple in that community or in that class. Maybe you're supposed to try a different modality. Maybe you're supposed to go over here and try this other thing. Try not to put the out of order sign on the bathroom stall. Instead, try to say, I'm going to a different bathroom. Why are we using the bathroom analogy for the love of God? I am so sorry. I'm not in charge here. I just work here. Talk to my boss. Okay. Hopefully this has made sense. The bottom line is this. If things are happening more, more and more and more and more to you, if it's picking up steam, you know, if it's picking up steam, picking up steam, it's happening more often. That's your sign. That's the message. The message is you have chosen this. This is your path. Take action within your comfort zone, at least at first. Maybe none of this is within your comfort. I question them because I'm like, there is no comfort zone. Who, who are you talking to? Do you know you're talking to humans? Okay. Anyway, take action that you can that you can that you can stand that you can do you know it's not going to be comfortable because it's not human it's outside of our lines that's what i'm trying to tell these non-humans that you're using the wrong words you're talking to the you're talking to us in the wrong way nobody's going to understand anyway take your steps find your people be easy with it Try not to cling on to those people like the only life preserver in the ocean. You can swim. That's the point. You don't need the life preserver. You don't need the people. It makes it easier. Sometimes it can make it better for you to understand what's happening. But the end result is you are an island onto yourself and you will find your way. You will find your way. Write down the signs. I've done lots of videos, guys. I'm telling you, there's an entire directory on how to do this. There really is. I can't put it all in one video. Write down the signs that you get. Keep a journal. And 
any journal. It can be on your phone, in your laptop. It can be anywhere. Write down what happens. If you do that, this will all make sense to you. If you don't do it, your brain will discard the information because it doesn't make sense. When I came out as psychic to all my friends that I've known for over 25 years, they said to me, Susan, you don't remember that time you came over and got rid of that ghost I was having that problem with? Susan, you don't remember that time that you had to leave because you said that there was too much effed up energy in this place? I am so grounded and such a regimented person that none of that made any sense to me. So I just like, my brain just said, nope, that doesn't make any sense. We're throwing that away. We're throwing that away. I didn't have any of those memories. I didn't remember that stuff. They remembered it. Yes, they're kind of shocked a little bit. I think that I talked to dead people and well, they're shocked about a lot of things, but not really as shocked as I am. So if you write it down, you can go back and look and say, wow, over the last three months, I'm having a lot of dreams about this. I'm having a lot more clairaudience psychic hearing. I'm having a lot more clairvoyance psychic seeing. You see a shadow. You see something out of the corner of your eye. Something makes you turn your head quickly. That's a physical reaction in your physical body, in a physical world, in a physical stimulus, but nothing was there. That's clairvoyance. Claircognizance, psychic knowing. I know my boss is going to get fired. Probably should have got fired five years ago, but they're going to get fired now. How do you know? Everybody wants to know how you know. I don't know. I just know. I just don't ask me how I know. How many times do we say that? Don't ask me how I know, but <laughs> we have all these euphemisms. We have all these ways of saying we're psychic without admitting that we're psychic. So this is how you're going to integrate it into your life. You're going to follow the signs more. You're going to be a little bit more gentle with the energy. When you have a knowing, maybe you take it a little bit more seriously. I'm not saying 100% seriously, but I'm saying maybe you take it 80% more seriously. Trust but verify. How many times do you walk out of the house and then it starts raining and you're like, I knew I should have grabbed the umbrella. I knew it. And you get mad. I had a feeling I needed my umbrella today. That's how you integrate it. When you have a feeling, a knowing, or you hear something, see something, however it comes to you, doesn't matter how it comes to you. And it can come to you in multiple different ways at the same time. Try to follow it. Try to be more in the flow of the energy. And then write these things down because your spirit guides and everybody has a spirit guide. Your spirit guides are communicating to you through many different ways. If you write it down, after a month or two, you're going to get the message. Wow. And it takes a month or two. Don't grab one message, one sign, and take it to the bank and try to deposit it into the energetic bank because it ain't going to work. You need multiple signs, multiple messages because it's not that simple all the time if it's an umbrella yeah if it's turn right because left is going to be more traffic yes but if it's something big in your life i'm going to quit my job i'm going to go back to school i'm going to quit school i'm going to get married I'm going to have a baby. Do you ever notice that we never ask our spirit guides when we're going to do those things? Like I had people come to me all the time and go, yeah, I, I'm doing this. And I'm like, really? You thought that was a good idea? Because in their brain, they thought it was a good idea. They didn't want to know. They didn't want to know. They didn't ask the cards. They didn't ask the pendulum. They didn't ask their spirit guides. They just did it. Because they wanted it. And sometimes you don't want to hear the word no, which is fine. This is a uniquely human experience we're having. And I got to tell you, 
as someone who has a pretty good open communication with my spirit guides, I hear no more than I hear yes, which frankly pisses me off. So take that, take that for what you will. Hopefully this video was helpful to you in some way. <laughs> if it was, please leave me a comment below. Let me know what experiences are you having? Are you having more and more and more experiences in one particular type or one particular part of your life? Or let me know your awakening experience. I experienced X, Y, Z, and that's how I know I am clairvoyant. I'm clairaudient, whatever it is. Or I'm having these experiences and I don't know what it means. This is a community. This is your community, part one. You can fill in the blanks. You can fill in where you need to with friends and other communities and classes and all of those things. But it's here for you. Don't do this alone. Get help, but realize in the end result, it is up to you. It's, it's completely up to you. Okay? Take really, really good care of yourselves. I'll talk to you next Wednesday.